Hello again guys, uh, well, let's continue with uh, Center of Gravity, uh, this is going to be a discussion also, it's going to be a lecture, so let me talk to you a little bit about what we are saying in Center of Gravity. Remember last class we were discussing Center of Gravity and we defined at the end that x bar was going to be the integral of x dA divided by the integral of dA and I say well if you know what is the integral of dA for me at least I don't know for your professor but for me you can put the area if you know it and y bar is going to be the integral of y dA divided by the integral of dA and that's perfect and that works beautiful and we show a couple of examples also and you can see the rest of my videos there's a bunch of examples that you can also uh, check but now I say check not check do not do not check that's a big no no okay that's why I'm doing these videos so you can understand instead of paying for solutions okay so what happened if you have something like is very common in engineering a section you have a t-beam section like that for example can you do this applying that formula well yes maybe what if you have something like this, which is also a fairly common type of section? Can you do that applying this formula? Well, maybe if I break it down, maybe if I do something else. Yeah, it could be possible. What about something like this? Can I do something like that and apply? This is a, this is a triangle and this is a half circle, for example. Can I do that? Okay. Uh, maybe we can do that applying these and establishing different boundaries and yeah that's correct you can do that however uh, I just want to take this for example the first one that I copy here and let's say that I want to determine the centroid or the center of gravity depending on what we are dealing with of this figure yeah, I remember yada yada yada. The first thing that we have to do is uh, put an axis of reference, and then I put an axis of reference, and then what is the next thing that you did? I have here the previous lecture, so what, what I did this this basically, I put the axis of reference, and then I say, oh, if this is divided in uh, small figures, and every figure is going to have a weight, and the location of the center, the center of each one of the figures is known because these are small we can assume that it's the same location for the centroid that for the center of the geometric figure etc 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 we say that what if I apply that to this concept I can apply that and I can apply the same concept to this so remember our formula our original formula was when we did that derivation this derivation our formula was this one summation of xi wi or if it was an xi and wi uh, it was another one that it was summation of xi ai summation from i equals one to n of xi ai divided by the summation of the ai if we're talking about centroid what if i apply the same concept to this shape and what this formula is telling me basically that I, is that I'm going to have a bunch of parts, pieces of that shape with a known location of the centroid for each one of those pieces. So what if I take this and I say, oh, you know something, this is basically two rectangles. I can say this is one rectangle and this is another rectangle. Do you know the area of a rectangle? Of course you do. It's B times H. Do you know the area of the rectangle? Also you know it. Do you know the location of the centroid of each one of the rectangles? Yes, I do know the location because this centroid of this rectangle is located there and the centroid of this rectangle is located there. So basically if I apply this formula to known figures, to known sections like that, it's going to be a lot easier than using the method of the integrals for this particular type of cases. So basically what do you need? You need the location of each one of the centroids, got it. The area of this one of the figures, got it. The multiplication of the centroid of figure one and the area one, got it. 
and the multiplication of centroid of figure 2 with area 2 got it divided by the summation of the areas which is basically the total area so then I can use this approach when I have that type of composite figures now what do I know what do I what am I calling like known figures known figures are those figures that you find usually tabulated in the back of your book these are known figures you see in these type of figures you know the location of the centroid 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 and you know the area of the shape so those are known figures of course I don't know if your professor is going to allow you to take those figures or not to take that table or not but some of the figures are common and you should memorize the location of the centroid anyway for example I know this quarter, uh, quarter of a circle um, area and semicircular area and of course circular area and triangle and rectangle those are the basic figures I know that I never knew this in my life and I'm not planning uh, I'm not planning now learning it but if you do it perfect do it now be be careful when you use this table because this table there is a distinction between circular sector area and circular arc segment you see that the arc segment is just the line when you're using centroid of lines but this area is just the area not the line so be careful with that because we're going to be using those tables in several problems I'm going to do one problem I'm going to solve one problem uh, or maybe two one I'm going to do one problem in this video and then I'm going to do another problem for a different video later on but for this video which is the introductory part let's basically solve the problem and learn by doing instead of learn by deriving anything else we already did so I'm going to use this calculate the centroid or determine the centroid of this composite figure here and we have to determine the centroid of this figure okay uh, let's say this is uh, one inch and this is nine inches same thing here one inch one inch and this distance from here to here is 22 inches obviously this is not uh, up to scale but you know the idea right so this is what we have and uh, we have to calculate the centroid in x and the centroid in y and that's what we are required to do in, in this problem let me move this here a little bit to the left to the left good okay so let's do it first thing first what is the first step all the time place your axis of references where whatever you want now select that whatever you want the best for you what is the best for you I don't know what is the best for you the best for me and it always works out like that is placing uh, as close as possible of the figure and placing all the whole figure in the first quadrant that's what I like to do I don't want to measure negative distances so perfect like that everything in the first quadrant second remember what we did when we were taking the when we were doing this that was the second step divided in figures okay then we have to divide this in several figures how many figures do you see here one two three four five I don't know what if I cut that I can cut that uh, in several ways so if I have that shape I can say that this is equal to this and that I can decompose it like that in three figures one two three I can decompose that also like that for example one two three if I want to I can decompose this in one two three I can convert this in triangles like that I can convert this in one two three four five so two four six eight ten figures whatever but the result should be the same of course I have more chances of messing up if I use more figures so what you have to do basically here is select the least amount of figures that you feel comfortable working with and then they can work with this so in this case I'm gonna cut this in three figures so I'm gonna say this is my figure one my figure one my figure two and my figure three 
And let's put the formula. What is the formula? The formula is x bar is equal to the summation from i equals 1 to n of x i a i divided by the summation of s a i i equal 1 to n and this is i and y bar is also the summation from i equal 1 to n of y i a i divided by the summation of a i there you go that's what we have there so we have to divide this in those figures and, and I know you can do this in one line, only one line in the calculator. But I want you to do that when you learn, not now. Now you're learning. So let's build a table that actually give me these values. And the table that I'm suggesting you to do is this figure, area, because that's one of the values that we use, area of each one of the figures. And in this particular case, we're working with the square inches. So I, I also advise you to put here the units. And then we need x in inches, which is the distance measured from my axis to the center of each one of the figures. And then you have y, which is another thing that you need also, y sub i in inches also. And then you have the multiplication, a i x i or vice versa. And this will be inches to the third. And then you have the multiplication in the other direction, a i y i in inches to the third also here. And then at the end, what is a what is a table telling you to do? What is the formula telling you to do? Oh, I have to do that for my three figures, one, two, three figures. And at the end, once I fill this table, I need the total area. Well, the total area is the summation of this area, and I need the summation of x i a i, and I need the summation of y i a i. So I'm going to fill this table, and at the end, I divide this, which is this, by that, which is that, and I get x bar. And if I divide this by that, I get y bar. That's it. So let's start with figure one. Uh, some people write, like to write here only one, but I do something else. I, do, I put my axis here, and I put whatever my figure one is, like a small representation, or where is the figure one? in my drawing and this is my figure one because somehow this gave me a visual clue clue of what I'm what am I doing uh, if I if I say instead of saying one two three I said one two and three if I say that then when I do that drawing my axis will be here right in this part so when I do my drawing my figure one will be somewhere hanging here and that will tell me immediately that there is a distance here that I have to add but this is not for this problem okay we are doing this problem so now area what is the area of this the area of this this is one this is nine so the total area from here to here is ten and my area is gonna be one times ten which is ten now what is xi and I want you to repeat this in your mine or you can repeat it out loud nobody's gonna say th that you're crazy because if you do that oh wait they say it about me I'm keeping repeating all the time repeating things but it doesn't matter it doesn't affect me so what is the this this xi repeat please is the location of the center of figure one which is here measured in the x direction from my axis of reference so basically this x is going to be the distance from here to here and how much is that well this is a rectangle so it has to be at the center meaning this distance here is five now what is y i y i is the distance measuring y from my axis of reference to the center of figure one which is from here to there now let's detail that uh, distance you have one here plus 22 and I know this has to be half of this thickness. So this is 0.5, and this is 1, and this is 22. 20, 1 plus 22, 23, 23.5. Or you can say, oh, the total is 24, and I go down 0.5. So 24 minus 0.5 is 23.5. 23.5. And then you have that. Now you multiply AI, XI, 50. 
AI YI 235 and we move to the next one this is so repetitive and so easy now we go to the next one now my figure 2 is this look I'm leaving this empty space here so I remember that my figure 2 is kind of floating in this with respect to this axis of reference what is the area? the area is 1 times 22 22 square inches what is x? well the center of my figure 2 is here at the center that's figure 2 remember figure 2 if this is 1 at the center from here to here it's going to be 0 0.5 no questions about that now what is the the yi for figure 2 well it's the distance measured from measuring y of course from my axis of reference to the center of the figure meaning I have to include this little floating distance here this little distance in my summation how much is that? I know the center of this rectangle is 11 but I also know that is one extra inch hanging to the bottom so 1 plus 11 is 12 and then I multiply 22 times 0 0.5 that's 11 and 22 times 12 is 264 and then we move to figure 3 which is this one and usually people are here <coughs> so working so fast they say oh this figure and that figure is the same figure so all the properties are the same and they start hey, 10, 5, 23.5, 50, 235 and then you have it wrong the area no doubt about it 1 times 10 10 the xi what is xi xi is the distance from my axis of reference measuring x to the center of the figure center of the figure is this meaning the distance is that how much is that well if this is 10 this is 5 half of the base perfect now what is y y is the distance measuring y from my axis of reference so this is going to be the y because the centroid is here if this is 1 the distance from here to the centroid is 0 0.5 meaning this distance here will be 0 0.5 and now multiply 10 times 5 is 50 10 times 0.5 is 5 do the summation 10 plus 10 20 plus 22 42 and this is the total area total area and now when you add this, this is 50, 100, 111 and this is AIXI and when you add these two, this is going to be 235 plus 5 is 240, 240, 264, 500, 504, 504 and this is a, a y, y, I. in summary, X bar is going to be this formula, right? summation of XI AI O oh, summation of XI is AI is this one 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 cubic inches divided by the summation of the total of the areas which is the total area which is this one 42 inches square and this and this cancel out and you have a value of 2.64 inches that's my value for XI so you get this one and this one and divide this by this now my y bar summation of which is this one summation of y i a i divided by a i y i a i is this one this one here 504 inches to the third divided by summation of the areas which is 42 inches square and this is 12 inches now if you did this in my opinion you just wasted time and I know this is the first one and everything else but if you inspect that shape you know that that shape going back to the things floating in the finger and doing equilibrium and magic and that thing over there you know that if I get this shape here and I put it in my finger definitely I know that it's symmetric and I know that my axis of reference should be at this my, my centroid in that direction should be at the center in that direction so the next step that I was telling you is locate that okay I'm locating that the first one is there which is 12 this is y bar 
and x bar is about 2.64 so if this is 2, 2.64 should be somewhere over there that's the centroid once you know the centroid is there you just make an image in your mind about that flip it and try to hold it from that point and see if kind of maintains the equilibrium and the balance in that part and if that you can see by only looking at that you can see if that makes sense or it doesn't make sense because imagine that you calculate that you know what is lame and it has happened a bunch in my class when I explain this say of course it's 12 I didn't have to calculate it good you know what is worse than that worse than that is calculating this getting 11 and you know it has to be 12 because you know it's symmetric you know there is no difference in densities and you don't even question that result that is wrong I allow my students just to say in the y direction the center of gravity mm -hmm. is 12 because the se section is symmetric and it has the same density I allow my students to do that because that thought that thing that shows that you're thinking not just doing okay now question for you why did we select three figures or three figures instead of selecting six figures or eight or nine or ten why do you think we did that we said it we said it we do that for one reason because for me it's easier to work with the least amount of figures and the least amount of figures here apparently is three and you know something it's not three it's not three and I'm looking for my scissors but I don't have them so I'm gonna use my pocket knife to show you that okay what if I tell you that you could do this with only two figures what two figures yes we could have done that with two figures and only two figures because I'm gonna copy that again here what if I take this no I'm gonna copy that and this I'm sorry I kill a tree for no reason whatsoever what if I get this thing here and I say this is my shape the total shape and this is what I want to do just this part this is what I need to calculate that part well I could just say you know the knowledge the key of knowledge this is the key of knowledge what if I do that and now I say you know something I'm gonna select two figures here and I'm going to make it like this that and that and now it happens that I could have done my whole design with two figures what are the two figures? well the two figures are figure one figure one the whole page figure one the whole page figure one minus this figure figure two and then I have one figure the whole rectangle minus figure two the small rectangle okay don't do that at home because you can get cut did I cut this? no I didn't cut that it's just spot so I'm gonna get that same problem same thing everything and I'm gonna say that this is gonna be equal to this minus that and for you to understand better what I'm doing I'm gonna put my axis of reference here x y and I know this is 10 I'm just copying the values from here so this is 10 and this is 22 plus 1 plus 1 24 24 and this is 10 also and remember this is one inch one inch everything is one inch here one inch one inch 
one inch. Now, if I do that, that will be the figure number one will be this one, which is a big, 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 big whole page, whole page complete a shape of 10 by 24 minus the center that I'm taking out. And this distance, of course, this is doesn't correspond to this because that should be here, right? Like there. And this should be higher, something like that. This is what I'm cutting out. And this is one inch, one inch. And this base will be this distance, which is nine. And this will be this distance, which is 22. 22. In that case, I have to solve only these two figures and that's it. I'm going to still do it with my table. Remember, I always copy the formula because it uh, helps me with the table. Xi, Ai divided by the summation of Ai. And Y bar is summation of Y, I, Ai divided by the summation of Ai or total area. So my table in this case is the same. I'm going to say figure. I'm going to say area. X, Y, A times X. A times Y. And you know the dimensions. I already put the dimensions uh, before. So these are my and then I'm going to use this as figure one. So what is my figure one? My figure one is this 1024 meaning the area is going to be uh, 240 Remember, remember the the units. Remember the Alamo. Remember the units. Inches, inches, inches square, inches to the third, inches to the third. That's what you have there. So, 240 x. What is x? Well, the centroid. X is the distance measured from my axis of reference to the centroid of the figure in consideration. Figure in consideration in this case is figure one. Figure one. So the center is located right there at the center. How much is in X? Well, if this is 10 by 24, this is going to be 5. What is Y? Y is the distance measured from my axis of reference in Y, of course, to the center. How much is that? Well, this is 24. This has to be 12. And then I multiply this times this. is 1200. 1200. And this times that is 2880. Done. Figure 2. Figure 2. Now I put my axis and I put my figure 2 like here. I like to remember floating in the space because this is what is happening. And then in that case, I don't forget this little one here. Area. Well, this is 9 times 22. 9 times 22 is 198. That's my area. X. What is X? X is the distance measured in X from my axis of reference to the center of that figure. The center of that figure is that. Which, if this is 9, I know this has to be 4.5. However, I have this distance here, which is 1 inch. So it's going to be 1 plus 4.5, 5.5. People always forget that little distance. That's why I put my axis of reference like that, so you can see it. Now in this case, once again, this is 22. Half of the distance is 11, meaning this is going to be 11 plus 1, 12. And now you multiply and you say 198 times 5.5, that's 1089. And 198 times 12, and that's 2376. And now what I do in my class, I'm sorry guys, but what I do in my class is this. And I say, okay, summarize this. This is 438. Wait a second. Summarize this. 438 because this plus this is 438 and then summarize this this is 2289 and summarize that and this is 
uh, 5, 2, 5, 6, and then I say, oh, x bar is equal to what? This divided by that, so this divided by that, 22, 89 divided by 438, and that's 5.23 inches, and y bar is equal to this divided by that, so 52, 56 divided by 438 inches, which is 12 inches, and then when we reach this point, the students say, but wait a second, but before we calculated, and it was x 2.64, and now we got 5.23, and then I do a little bit of theater and say, oh my god, what is wrong here? What happened here? I don't know. We mess up in the calculation. We mess up in the numbers. I don't know what happened. Of course, I do know what happened, and that's why I leave this space here. What happened is that you have to follow, you have to follow whatever you say we were going to do. You say this minus that, and I said this plus that. That's what I did. When I did this plus that is that. This is plain and simply wrong. That's not correct. So my advice to you, whenever you are subtracting an area, do yourself a favor. This here it's going to be the negative area, right? So put it in a different color. Put it in a circle. I don't know, put some arrows there. Put some remarks here. Negative. And do that. And do that. And do that. And maybe you won't forget. And believe it or not, even by doing that, and I do that in class, there's a bunch of students that come to the exam and they have to do this type of problems and then they do it wrong because they forget that they have to be negative. Now let's do it correctly. 240 minus 198, that is 42. 1200 minus 1089 is 111. And 2880 minus 2376 is 504. Oh, surprise, surprise. This is what we did before. Look at the values. 111, 504, 42. The fact that you're using a different method doesn't mean that it's going to be wrong. X bar, 111 divided by 42, 2.64. Y bar, 504 divided by 42. 12 inches and those are your results and then you can come and tell me oh but why this result was the same as this one but this one was wrong so in this case was right no in that case was also incorrect what happened is that if you realize that's another way by the way another thing that you have to check also when you're doing your tables if you have any any this uh, any case in that all the distances are the same there's no way that this is going to be different here, the summation. So that's what happened here. Even though I subtracted instead of adding, I'm calculating a weird shape because basically instead of saying that this is whole, I'm calculating a shape that it will be this and on this and on top of this I have that also. It will be like above that. But all the centroids are in the same location and that's why I got with 12 inches. But be very careful, guys, please. When you subtract here, remember, you have to subtract here also because otherwise you are going to have it wrong. I hope that you like this video, and I'm going to keep doing videos in these and posting them for you. Have a good day.